Hi everyone, it is Melissa Wilson back again for Aim at Melanoma series, Melanoma 101. I'm a physician assistant and Aim at Melanoma's Ask an Expert. Um, what I'm here to talk to you about today is I have a melanoma, now what? So this is something that if you're watching this, you probably have been diagnosed with melanoma. This is something that brings so much anxiety to patients because they don't have a plan. And I am here to tell you that educating yourself through medical providers and through Aim at Melanoma Foundation's website and by asking questions of someone like me, the Ask an Expert, um, are all ways to educate yourself about your melanoma because an educated patient is much, much better at handling the things that are to come and for moving forward in your care. So please, please know that you are not alone in this. So the first tip for I have a melanoma, now what, is do not panic. That's the worst thing that you can do. So really what we're here to do is help you gain the tools to know where do I go from here? Really the most important thing is that we need to establish a plan. What does that mean? Does it mean that the minute that you get the diagnosis of mel melanoma that you need to know exactly what is going to happen in the next 10 minutes? No. What that means is that you're going to hopefully ask the appropriate questions and get to the appropriate person or persons that need to treat your melanoma. So who are those people? What should this plan be? So you just got off the phone, you found out that you have melanoma. Sometimes if the melanoma is extremely thin, sometimes that can be re-excised by a person at a dermatologist's office. Um, it doesn't always necessarily have to be in the context of a surgery in an operating suite. So just know that if your dermatologist calls and says, you've been diagnosed with melanoma, I'm going to set up a wide excision in the office, that can be extremely normal. So don't panic, first of all, about that. Um, other melanomas are excised in the context of an operating suite and sometimes are excised along with a sentinel node. If you don't know what I'm talking about in this scenario, you might wanna go back and watch my video about excisions of melanoma or also the sentinel node biopsy video. Those are also available on the website. So um, sometimes you'll have multiple procedures. Those types of things are generally speaking done in the operating room. So your first plan should be who's going to do my wide excision and is it something that I need to contact a surgeon for? Generally speaking, the person that removed your melanoma will know the answers to those questions. So if you ask your dermatologist if they plan to do an excision in the office, um, they'll be able to tell you whether or not that's something that is possible or whether or not we need to get a surgeon involved. If that's the case, we can help you find a surgeon um, in your area, um, but asking the person who removed your melanoma for a recommendation is often a good place to start. So. Once you have established who's going to go back and do further surgery for your melanoma, the next thing is that you wanna ask questions. Um, one of the most important things when you're looking at pathology, um, actually there's a lot of important things and we can go and do a video about that as well, but one of the most important things is the Breslow depth. So that's an actual measurement of how far the melanoma goes down into your skin. If, based upon the most current AJGCC guidelines, if your melanoma is greater than 0.75 millimeters, it's an actual measurement, um, then most of the time you will be recommended to have a sentinel node biopsy along with a wide excision. If it's smaller than that but has some bad prognostic findings like mitoses um, or ulceration, there are some special circumstances that may require a sentinel node for thinner melanomas, but really those are special circumstances that really should be recommended by a medical provider. So we want to make sure that we know what our Breslow depth is. We wanna make sure that we know whether or not getting BRAF testing is an indication. We wanna know whether or not we need a sentinel node. So make sure that you ask questions. I'm happy to provide you with a list of things that you could ask your surgeon or dermatologist surgeon um, in those types of visits. 
let's say that you're a little further down in this journey where you already know um, that you have melanoma, you already have had a sentinel node, um, which is either positive or negative. This is also a really good place to ask questions of your medical provider about follow-up because follow-up is also part of our tips on how to deal with this. Um, generally speaking, once you've been diagnosed with a melanoma, you're going to see an increase in the amount of surveillance that you're going to need either through your dermatologist or sometimes that may also require not only a dermatologist but a medical oncologist as well. Um, each circumstance is a little bit different so we can't really talk about that in the context of this video but just know that this is a really good place to talk about what types of things do I need to do moving forward because surveillance is extremely important. It helps prevent reoccurrences or identify reoccurrences earlier. It also um, helps identify second or third melanomas or new melanomas that might occur because of the things that caused your first one, like sun exposure, things like that. So um, make sure that as part of your plan, you know what is my surgical plan moving forward. Do I need additional testing such as scans or BRAF testing? What will my follow-up be? The other thing that I really want to press home before we end this video is do not fear the sun. This is one of the things that I get so many questions about and so many patients are afraid after they've had a melanoma of really enjoying their regular activities, whether it be going to their vacation spots that they love um, or whether or not they're trying to continue doing outdoor activities. Really, these things can continue. And for melanoma patients, even though you have had a melanoma or even other skin cancers, it doesn't mean that you can enjoy outdoor life the way that you did before. The biggest thing is that you need to now remember that you need to protect your skin moving forward. So things like sunscreen, protective clothing, hats, sunglasses, seeking the shade where you can, those are all modifications that you will probably have to make to enjoy all of the same things that you did before, but they are all doable things. So just remember that having a diagnosis of melanoma does not mean that you need to stop living your life. It just means that you gotta make a little bit of a modification moving forward. I hope that this helps to waylay your fears about having been diagnosed with melanoma, but please know that if you have questions or other things that you wanna talk about, we're always available at the Aim at Melanoma Foundation. Um, you can find our contact information on our website. Um, you can always reach out to me as the Ask an Expert. And I hope that you know that we're all here for you. Have a wonderful day.